Hey friends, welcome back to the Finding Joy in Your Home podcast. I am your host, Jamie Valmay. Jason, my husband, is joining me today yep. to talk about one of our favorite topics, which is reading. Yes. Okay, so we're a little bit late, actually, on this episode. We usually do this kind of middle December yeah. or so, but our December was jam-packed. It was a touch busy, you could say. <laughs> it was busy. <laughs> so we're here uh, in January now um, doing kind of a... A little bit of a breakdown of 2023. We did kind of talk about our reading in 2023 already, so we can link to that episode. We're going to talk a little bit about our reading challenge that we did and then what our reading challenge that we're doing for this year is. So last year, 2023, was actually a pretty good reading year for us. Pretty darn good. Probably the best in a few years, yeah. actually. <clears throat> it was the first time I hit my reading goal in like, I don't know, like maybe four, three, three or four years. Um, you hit your goal... I want to say three or three years ago. Something like that. But the last then like the, at least the last two, I did not. The last several. Yeah, we have not hit our reading goal, which is fine. We've talked about this before, that the reason that we set reading goals personally is because we want to read more. Mm -hmm. We want to pick up more books. We want to say no to TV more. We just we really want to be reading. And so we set a reading challenge solely for the purpose of self-motivating ourselves yes. to read more, to pick up books more. So in 2022, I think I read 67 books somewhere around there. Okay. Uh, and my goal was 104 books. But so I like didn't even get close to my goal, but I read 67 books. Like Which I was still really good. I was good. <laughs> really happy with that amount. And the thing is, I was happy with the decisions I made that year. Like I was happy the amount of times I picked up a book. So that's really that's the that's the goal of doing this reading challenge is that we're just motivating ourselves to pick up books more, um, to to be reading. And so whether we hit our goal or not, that's what we're striving for is to kind of motivate ourselves. Exactly. So we did, though, 2023, we both hit our goals. So yes. our goals were both 104 books, which works out to two books a week, two books a week, um, which is a pretty, you know, pretty rigorous pace. If you don't stay on that pace, then you're doomed. Like, there's no yeah. way you're <laughs> if you fall too far behind. Yeah, you're never too far behind. You're, you're you know, you're not yeah. going to do it. Um, I did fall behind at one point in the fall a little bit. And then it was like I was like. <laughs> eight books behind and I thought, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do this. But in December, I caught up and so I finished uh, at 105 books. And I think I should have looked it up. You were 107. I yeah, okay, that's what I was gonna say. I thought mm -hmm. 107 books, so just a couple more. 107, so we both beat our reading goals for the year, which was really fun. Um, for those of you guys who keep stock, Jason and I have a very friendly competition. <laughs> so Jason did win this year. He won, which I won a couple years in a row and then I think the last time you won, I don't know. We should look back at. I think I won last year, even though we both failed. I still read more. Do you remember what you read? Like 70. Okay. So pretty close, though, actually. It's really funny. Yeah, not we, far off. We do tend to, we don't really do it on purpose. We do tend to stay remarkably on track with each other. Which is funny for two reasons. One, we do read a whole lot of different books than each yeah, other. Yeah, we read it's very like different books. It's not like we're reading the same books. Mm -hmm. And two. We read some of the same books. But. We read. I guess that's just the main reason, like the book. So like the length of the books can vary the, you know, and the, the, the books are often different. And so the fact that we actually stay on, I think honestly, it's partly because when you see me reading or if I see you reading and the others not, it's like, oh, I got to read like the reading. I think I you actually, you care about that more. I'll be like, babe, I finished another book. And he's like, no, I got to go pick up my <laughs> book. Whereas like I get off and I just like don't care. And I'm like, whatever. So it definitely motivates yeah. you so to pick I'm up more, more. Maybe I'm more competitive. It's the competitive nature. <laughs> no, when we get to close, like once I, I'm like, if I'm like 30 books behind you, I'm like, whatever. But it, if I am like a couple books, I'd be like, oh, I got to get it because like, in December, I was like, I am so close to this reading challenge goal. Like, I have to finish it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way I'm not going to finish it at this point. Yeah. So I did push myself to be like, oh, I'm going to finish up a few books that I'm in the middle of. So I we definitely did that. Um, but it is funny how we do stay on on par a lot. I don't know if that I don't know if that's going to be for this year. I think we may have a wider gap this year. Well, in our, our reading. goals are different. All our goals are different. So. Well, they may end up being the same. We'll talk about that. Could, yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about 2023 reading habits. Okay. Um, was your, you know, we Jason and I both read a lot of fiction and nonfiction. So in all of my years of tracking reading, I stay really consistent at about 70% nonfiction, 30% fiction. Mm -hmm. What you are you more like 50-50? I would have said more like 65, 35, <coughs> okay. like two thirds, one third, you know, kind of split. 
Um, but yeah, I usually read more nonfiction than fiction. So what was your split this year? Was that pretty, pretty much the same? No, I was closer to 50, 50 this year, actually, Okay. uh, which I don't know. I don't exactly know why that happened. It just did. I think I was, I actually had a reading slump in the, I want to say late spring Mm -hmm. and I was just having a hard time having anything grip me. I actually was in the middle of a fiction series that was just not hitting for me, which doesn't happen often. I don't know if it's that I either, no, I, I have pretty... I don't know, uh, exacting taste. Like I, I, I want to enjoy the book I'm reading and I pick books, that, but I have a high hit rate on success. Like I generally, I'm, I'm rating my books four and five stars because I you really, know what you I like. know what I like yeah. and I'm pretty good at picking that. But for whatever reason, it just wasn't working for me. And I found myself just less likely to read. Mm-hmm. And it was, even though it was just specifically my, my fiction, it was actually affecting my reading in general. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, cause I'll read that might some nonfiction and then I'll read fiction. And it's just, I wasn't excited about it. So I just wasn't picking it up. And, uh, when I finally broke through that, it was actually by recommendation of you. You had told me like, I change forced it up, him to, to drop stop. that series, <laughs> pick something else. And so I actually picked something. It was a totally different genre, totally different everything. And it really got me back into it. Yeah. But I think then I actually was like almost on like a fiction kick. And so then I yeah. just like read several yeah. books in a row. And I think from that point on, I just I was ahead in that category. And so I just like stayed closer to 50 50 the whole year. I think it's a good lesson, though, because I had somebody the other day. On Instagram, I can't remember her exact wording, but she said, like, help, like, what do you do? Like, how far into a book do you abandon it when, like, you're falling asleep reading it and you just can't get through it? And I don't know if she was talking about fiction or nonfiction. It sounded kind of like fiction to me. Um, And I said, um, you know, she's like, at what point do you abandon it? And I'm like, now, like, put it aside, be done with it. You can always go back later to a book. But sometimes we, like, want to muscle our way through a book and then we don't pick it up and we don't pick it up. And so that's actually completely defeating your reading goals. So that's what he was doing is he kept like, he had his book in his hand and then I'm like in there reading like into my book and I look over and he's like, got his phone out. (laughs) And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I know I gotta read. But like, I could see that there wasn't that joy. And I was like, you need to be done. And we're both kind of stubborn. Like we both are like, well, no, I started the book. I need to finish it. And you did finish the book, right? I actually did. You just didn't continue on in the series, which, That is pretty unusual for us, but there are absolutely times and places. Um, And I have gotten really quick with fiction. I am a busy, tired mom, and I don't always have the like mental (laughs) fortitude or interest in some really, really slow moving stories where like I used to probably have more capacity for that. So I'm really fast with fiction. If if in the first (laughs) like three chapters I'm fighting and never wanting to pick it up. Like I will abandon it. Mm -hmm. And there are certain books you got to give time, but I've just learned that there's, there's certain books that I'm like, this is not worth my time. I I need to be in a book. That's going to be really, you know, keeping my interest and picking up more Mm -hmm. books. Well, and for me, I think it's it's very much on the characters. And like the, the reason I was having trouble with that series was that I was having difficulty connecting with anyone because it wasn't an issue of pace. It was a pretty action packed book. I just didn't care. Mm -hmm. about what was happening because I didn't care about who was involved and I was just like I don't like any of you and that was the issue with the book and so I just so I think for me I'm always looking as I'm trying to get into a series um that's the first thing that I really need to discern is like do I care about the people that like are because that's that's just how I enjoy reading yeah the other thing you said that I think is important to note is that when I'm reading a lot of fiction it actually encourages me to read more nonfiction. Mm-hmm. So I view nonfiction reading as really important. Like the books that I read are for growth and for knowledge and for um, faith. And we read, you know, we read biographies, we read theology books. Like I think those are really, really important, especially for Christians to be to be growing and as humans. And I want to model that learning to my kids and yep. I want them to see me learning. So I think nonfiction reading is really important. And I think fiction reading can be important as well. I think you can learn really good things through stories. I agree. Um, But sometimes fiction is just for fun. That's my entertainment. That's how I'm unwinding at the end of a long day. And so picking up fiction books just gets me like the more that I'm in the reading mode, the more that I'm reading nonfiction as well. Because what we both do is we like to end most nights with reading. Um, It's a great way to wind down, to get off screens, to relax before bed. And so in the evenings, we will all, both of us almost always will pick up our nonfiction first, Mm -hmm. read a chapter or so from it, read a little bit from it, and then we'll turn to our fiction books. And I always try to, if I feel like I, often when I start like a fiction series, I have to read it like, you know, one book through that, like, I'm not pausing. I like, I got to read the whole series together. And then I'll often be like, okay, I need a break. I'm going to read a couple, finish up those couple of nonfiction and then I'll bounce back to my fiction. Hmm. So it really does help, um, to have that 
Yeah. You know, it helps me read a lot more nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Now, this was my first year ever. This is really, really notable. I've never had this before. I'm usually 70, 30. So 70% nonfiction, 30% fiction, not, not even by like necessarily trying to do that. It just kind of happens. Um, I was, was I, no, I forget what I am now, but I was much, much higher in fiction than I ever have been. Okay. How do I pull up? How do I pull up last year's? I don't actually know. I don't know how. Oh man. Maybe I can't pull up last year's now. works. So we're tracking our reading. I track my reading now in Storygraph. Um, are you doing exclusively Storygraph this year or are you using Goodreads still to track? I'm using both. I like things about both. So so I you enter both. your book into both. That's cute. I only track my reading in one though, like because I'll actually do progress updates, but I only do that in Goodreads. I don't bother putting that in both places. Oh, here but we go. But when I finish the book, I'll mark it. Wait, you do what? Both. What do you do? Well, I, I, I do reading progress. Oh yeah. So Jason, when he's reading a book, he'll mark off like, I'm at page 33. And so like he'll he'll know like how far he is in books. I don't do that. I wait till I finish a book and then I enter it into the app and mark read. I'm I also I, I find myself curious like on how long books took me. And so when I enter it, when I start it and then I enter it when I end it, like it actually tells me, you know, you read this book over five days or whatever. So um, that's that single point of data is not interesting. But when you see it at the end of the year with the whole year's worth of reading, it actually you, you can find out like, you know, how long it took you on average to read a book, et cetera. And I just find that kind of interesting. OK, I will. <laughs> I will trust you on that. OK, I have my 2023 wrap up, but it's not showing me my <clears throat> fiction slash nonfiction reading challenges anyway so but i read way more fiction this year than i did nonfiction for the first time ever so to me that's a signal that like i, I to be honest i was kind of struggling this year to find nonfiction books that were really exciting to me i just didn't have a huge list and often we will have kind of a stack of books we're excited to get through because mm -hmm. i get really excited about my nonfiction reading too and i just I didn't have that this year. I mean, I read fiction, nonfiction for sure, but I wasn't as excited. So that to me is a signal that I need to kind of work on that this year. I'd like to regain that balance of yeah. more like 70, 30. Um, and also, by the way, nonfiction books tend to be a whole lot shorter. So if you are reading a lot more nonfiction. Yeah, not always, but generally, if you're reading a lot more nonfiction, your book count's going to go way yeah. up. Well, we also read very long fiction. Like I just finished a fiction book this morning. I'm going to be way ahead of you already. Oh, boy. Um, that was like 850 pages. <laughs> so um, so I have three books now read for I've, 2024. It's been one week and I've read one book. So and I am. Let me see how many pages I've done. Now, I've had a good reading week. I am at 1,448 pages. I'm at like three well, of the what? <laughs> Three and a half pages for the one book I finished. It was like a 400 page book. OK, yeah. So. But you'll but see the difference is you're in the middle of like seven books right now. Not so you're going to like wrap them up in like, like nine books. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. So uh, we'll see. OK, so do we want to talk about do we have any outstanding books? Oh, I just lost. <laughs> From last I just year? lost it. Yeah. So do you have any outstanding books that you read um, in 2023? One of the things that we did do, um, we did a deep dive this year mm -hmm. on head coverings. Oh, yeah, um, right. And so we read several books and I think every book I read on head coverings was really good. OK, so I got to <laughs> I got to find this all over again. I went to my notifications. That's OK. That's how you can find it. Did you find yours? Yeah, I mean, good reads. OK. Oh, because it's easier. OK, so. What? Let's see. Do you have any standout books from this year? So we both read um, Head Covering Throughout Church History. Um, it was a really, really short book, but mm -hmm. it has just quotes from people on Head Covering Throughout Church History. And then we both read Dale Partridge's book, A Cover for Glory. Is that what it's Something called? like that, yeah. And that was really good as well. That one was really good. Yeah. Um, I, I'm now I'm looking through. I had a lot of really good books this year. I started this year, um, I read The Reformation, A History uh, oh, by that Diarmid... McCulloch, which was, was that like, like an 800 page. That was like a big book. That was dry and slow at points, but overall, I really enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. At the beginning of this year, I read Melissa K. Norris's her two of her first books, um, Handmade and then The Made from Scratch Life. And those are both really good. Those were, if you're interested in like natural living, anything like that, those were both really great. Um, I read, oh, The American Puritans by, I think that was by, I think it's by Beaky. No, I think that one's by, um, Oh, like no. Pickowitz. Pickowitz and Benj. Dustin Benj. Yeah. Um, the American Puritans. I listened to that as an audiobook, and that one was really, really good. Mm. Um, I also listened to, um, oh, yeah, I listened to The Convivial Homeschool for the first time as well by Misty Winkler. Uh, that one was great. I did not read that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I read a, a good 
A book that I really enjoyed uh, was Masculine Christianity by Zach Garris. That was a really good book. I remember mm. enjoying that one from the first part of the year. Um, oh, I also read. OK, so this one's a great recommendation. OK, um, Durable Trades. All right. Yes, I read that one, too. We're gonna, I'm going to make Jason put all of these in the links down below. Okay. So as you listen through to edit. That means it's going to be a slower edit than usual. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can thank Jason for that. And if he forgets, you can bug Jason about that. No, just kidding. So we both read Durable Trades. Mm -hmm. This is a book by Rory Groves. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's called Family Centered Economics uh, that have stood the test of time. Wow, it's tiny on the screen. Um, and it's about uh, he goes through like the first half is about trades and why trades need to have a comeback, why we need to be teaching, you know, our kids need to be maybe a lot of them not even going to college, but doing trade school. Mm -hmm. And then the second half of the book is like him ranking the different trades by um, how family friendly they are, the yeah. the amount they make. So it's like an indispensable guide to have right. if you are raising kids. So that one was fantastic. I found my greatest value out of that book. My favorite part was the beginning chapters, like the introductory chapter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then like the conclusion, um, I didn't actually personally love the breakdown of the trades themselves. Uh, I found some of the information either not necessarily accurate or like in some cases depressing. Like, why would I want to do that trade if it like, you know, that doesn't seem like a very good trade. Some of them were great. But so anyways, my 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 priority was I you're you looking, wanted him to like pretend like they're all no happy I, and great. No, I just I was not as interested in that part. I read every word and thought it was amazing. I just <laughs> I, I read every word, too. I just didn't love that part. I love the chapters like the concept and the priorities and the principles. Well, and behind it, can, it I love it can get a little monotonous if you're reading just through like trade after trade after yeah. trade. So it's not I mean, it be it's just a good book to have on hand, too. You don't even necessarily have to read through all of the different trades as yeah. well. Another book that I really enjoyed this year uh, was Jared Longshore's The Case for the Christian Family. Oh, yeah. I really liked mm -hmm. that one. That one was good. Yeah, see, we have a good amount of... Um, oh, yeah, you read that one too. We got a good amount of crossover. Um, let's see. I was on a Steinbeck kick this year. Oh, that's so right. I read... I read um, well, that was, was that in like the spring? That was like a while ago. Yeah, that was started in the spring and mm -hmm. then I finished in the summer. So I read Grapes of Wrath. I reread East of Eden because I remember reading that one when I was a kid. I read um, Of Mice and Men, although that one I read a couple of years ago. I didn't reread that one because mm -hmm. I just recently read that. But basically I read like uh, between a few years ago and this year, I read I think his like his entire mm -hmm. catalog. Okay, so I feel like we talked about this in the reading episode we did in December. So forgive me. But um, a book that you just read that I finished like that I did. Oh, yes. Oh, I did this in September um, is a history of the world in six classes. It's not a Christian book, but he's tracing like history through six different beverages. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting. Yeah. So there's tea and coffee and wine and beer and, and uh, spirits, spirits. Oh, and Coca-Cola. Yes. That's the sixth mm -hmm. one. Coca-Cola was really interesting in the role that it played in World War II. Yeah. So that one was just a super interesting, like, historical look. He gets, the author gets super weird in the last chapter. All of a sudden, he starts talking about climate change and living on Mars. Like, <laughs> all of a sudden, do you remember that part? Yeah. Although I was like, you, you read it before me, so you told me about it. So then I actually was like, oh, that was it. Oh, did it see? You, you thought you it had, was going to be like you had, more. You had built it up in my mind. So I was like waiting for this like kind of big well, weird part. And it was like actually not that much. But it was weird, though, because he's talking about all this historical stuff. And then all of a sudden and you can tell he's not a Christian. You can tell there's some interesting philosophies behind some of his stuff. But mostly it's interesting. And then at the end, though, you just there's this weird part that you're like, <laughs> it just felt so disconnected from what he was talking about. That. Yeah, that was interesting. But this author, Tom Standage, has a bunch of history books. Like, why? Why have I not? I did done a ton of history this year, but I actually I need to read more of his because so, that was interesting. And we both listened to it as an audiobook mm -hmm. and it was great. Which, so by the way, yes, that does count. Yes. And I'm not interested count. in hearing that it doesn't because it does. You're consuming <laughs> It's a book. You're consuming you, you got the knowledge the out of the book. Or the data, so it counts. It counts. I, now, I wouldn't want to exclusively listen to audio, and there Me are either. many books that I don't want to listen yeah. to I audio. I overall prefer reading, yes. but the only way I can fit in as many books as I'd like is to also sometimes listen. Well, and I found there's the right type. So biographies tend to be absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. for, yes. for listening, unless it's like I've started a few biographies that are so slow and dense that you're like, never yeah. mind. <laughs> Generally speaking, though, history and biography are two of my favorite to read. Uh, to listen to uh, theology, I tend to prefer to read because those are ones you're reading slower. And, or like what's but, a OK, so this probably falls under biography, but like I've read a few books where they're like, I guess it's like a narrative bio biography mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, I, one was like that guy who started the Christmas tree farm and it was like about 
they're like i guess it's biography or memoir if a memoir, memoir that's that's probably the word i'm looking for it's like kind of a memoir but also i don't know when it when i guess it's memoir when memoir can be done really well yeah. and very story driven i like, generally consider it by autobiography yeah i but. guess that's what it is i feel like there's another there's some like narrative word i'm looking for it's like a blend anyway whatever um <laughs> someone will comment and let me know what I'm thinking. Um, but that kind of is so good for audio. There's a lot of um, like Christian nonfiction books that can be really great and encouraging, um, you know, books on. I listened to Nancy Wilson's book this year on contentment. That one's great to listen to. Like there's so many great books like that. Um, deeper theology books I like to read as well. Mm -hmm. um, and anything I kind of want to take notes on or anything like that. And then certain fiction work really, really well for audio mm -hmm. and certain fiction do not. So I, I always kind of have to play with, I've learned what works well for me mm -hmm. for audio or yeah, not. Absolutely agree. Uh, as I'm scanning through last year, two other books to stand out. Uh, I read uh, Discontinuity to Continuity by Benjamin Merkel. Yeah, that's on my uh, it's actually list. On, yeah, it's on your list right now, um, which is basically just a book. It, it basically takes you through um, the whole range of, of, of theology views uh, from uh, like classic dispensational theology, progressive dispensationalism uh, to like progressive covenantalism to classic um, covenant theology and everything in between. And it just does kind of a compare and contrast. Uh, I thought it was pretty well done. Yeah. And the author uh, did a good job, I think, of not being overly biased. I actually had a hard time figuring out what he was actually would hold to himself. Hmm. And I actually, to this day, it, like, it's not just like I Googled his name and I couldn't actually find like an absolute answer. So I have my, I have my inklings, but hmm. he did a good job because it wasn't like, obviously this one is the one that he agrees with. Okay. I have two more that I'm going to share. Um, oh, this, this next one is a good one. We both just read this, mm -hmm. um, consumption control. In fact, they just finished it December 16th, avoiding antinomianism and legalism. It's all about, um, <clears throat> uh, birth control and spacing of children. And um, in our opinion, he walks the good line of not uh, of being kind of in the middle of not being full blown open womb, but also being very different from be very discerning <clears throat> with the like sorts of contraception. Mm -hmm. And and when it's used and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Um, Jason read it first and raved about it. I really liked it. I agreed with a lot of the stuff that he said, but I don't think it's a very accessible book. I don't think that he laid out the arguments in a very easy to understand way. I think you already need to know quite a bit of the arguments going into it. Um, so I really liked it, but I have heard from people that just felt like it was too heavy. And also, I don't think that there was a super great flow through the book. I feel mm. like it should have been like, these are the different arguments and then we're going to work through them. And so I don't know that, I it, did think that the, it felt very jumbled. The organization was a little off to me. I read it. And I wasn't thinking about it for other people. So I didn't yeah. have that issue that you kind of said. But I hypothetically agree. Like, that seems like maybe that was true. Um, but I did. I definitely do agree with the fact that some of the organization of, like, how the chapters and how it flowed was a little bit jarring. Yeah. Okay. And then my very last one, I just finished this one December 19th. Um, I listened to this one as an audiobook, which was really good. A Different Shade of Green, A Biblical Approach to Environmentalism and the Dominion Mandate by Gordon Wilson. So this one was really, really good. Like, should Christians care about the environment? Should we care about stewarding animals well? Um, but from like a completely non-woke, non-liberal argument and like, it was really good. Oh, I, yeah. I told you that you need to listen to that yeah, one. Yeah, I have not read that one yet, but I It will. was really, really yeah. good. I and really liked that one a lot. To round out my year, I'll just name two others. I read um, Five Lies of Our Anti-Christian Age by oh, Rosaria yeah. Butterfield. Absolutely loved it. That one's I really good. I've read every single one of her books, and I think I'd have to say this was even... I've always enjoyed her books, and this is my favorite one. Yeah, it was really good. I thought it was excellently done. And, uh, and then finally, uh, just like the week before the end of the year... Uh, like right around Christmas, I I finished the uh, Stephen Ambrose Band of Brothers, the history book that the um, the HBO miniseries is actually based on. Oh, interesting! Uh, it's a history of World War II, looking specifically at this at, at this uh, particular company, um, and it, it and basically as it went through uh, Western Europe and, and towards the end of the year, and I mean the end of the war, and it was just really good. Hmm. Yeah. So, so if you like if you like history, if you like World War II, then highly recommend. So those are obviously just some pickings from 
our nonfiction list. We don't tend to talk about fiction a whole lot because fiction is so, so subjective, so highly individualized. Like a lot of stuff he reads, I would be bored to tears. And I'm like, no, half the stuff I read. He's like, no, thank you. So like, and we do have a lot of crossover. Mm -hmm. We both very, very much like the same kind of genres of reading. But even within that, we have our within own the genres. We have pretty different players and tastes and all of that. And so, um, you know, fiction is one of those that's like find what you enjoy within mm -hmm. fiction. Branch out sometimes because you might be surprised and find things like like I love historical fiction and I just don't I, read it enough. Yeah. Like I need to find, but half the, half the battle is finding yeah, the books well, and finding the authors. I found some this year and I read a ton of historical fiction yeah. uh, and it was amazing. That's probably why your fiction count was yeah, actually, higher this year yeah. was a lot of the historical fiction. Yeah. Cause well, those books are terribly long. Like I think the average, so I read, I read a bunch of Bernard Cornwell this year. Mm -hmm. I've heard his name in the past, but like I, as like, you know, kind of one of those premier names in historical fiction. And I just never picked him up. So this year on a whim, I was like, I'm going to read that. And so I read his entire series, the Saxon story. So his entire story uh, series on uh, like the time of, of late 1800s, early 900s. I say 1800s, 800s, 900s, <laughs> and like the form forming of England uh, and the Vikings and everything that was involved there. So fascinating and really well done. But yeah, uh, his, I I really lucked out finding him because I really enjoyed those. That's awesome. Okay, so before we get into 2024 challenge and what we're doing, because we're doing it completely different this year, this will be the we're changing it up now. Maybe maybe to other people they're going to be like. It's, it's still the same. the same. You're just reading. But for us, it feels like it's like a big change up. But first, I wanted to mention our sponsor for today's episode, the Homemaker's Friend Daily Planner. So we have had this planner in our home for like, I don't know, six or seven different years. It is absolutely fantastic. So it is a Christian planner. There is scripture throughout, which I really love. And the biggest thing is that it is written for homemakers buy a homemaker. Now, you don't have to be a stay at home mom to really enjoy this thing. But if you do things within your home, if you have to do meal planning and laundry and all the things, this is going to help you be able to organize your household. Also, your life, anything that you have, like I, you can do business planning in here. You can do everything. It's not just a domestic planner. But wow, is it set up in a way that is really easy to use. You can see it's nice and compact so I can throw it in my purse and bring it with me, which is huge. You know, I that love is. to bring everything with me and have it all <laughs> at my fingertips. But you've got yearly planning, monthly, weekly. It's broken out. You've got tasks and projects. You have perforated shopping lists in the back that you can take out and the best part about it is that you can get it for under 20 bucks and a lot of wow. planners that's a really good price <clears throat> it is and a lot of planners are like 60 70 bucks 50 bucks um and for a good planner that can be worth it but you can get a really really good planner for under 20 dollars in fact, if you use my coupon code planner, P-L-A-N-N-E-R, you can get an additional $3 off, making it just $14.49, which is fantastic. So if you are ready to get your year prepped ahead, if you're ready to get planning, get stuff done, you can put your reading goals in here. You can track reading. You can write in what you've read. Um, then head over to homemakersfriend.com. That's homemakersfriend.com. Use my coupon code planner, P-L-A-N-N-E-R, all capitals, to get an additional $3 off. So go check it out because this is the time to get planning. Okay, so let's transition then into our 2024. Yes. All right, so we did talk about this a bit, so we don't need to belabor this because we all know if you listen to our goals from last week that Jason's insane. We all know this. <laughs> we just know that generally. Um, and Jason's doing a really ridiculous Bible reading challenge this year, which I'm actually very proud of you. He has been, we are seven days into the new year and he has been just like i'm hitting it so far you've been hitting it and he's been I haven't doing finished it finished today's because i haven't listened to the seminary class mm -hmm. for today but um everything else i've done yeah he's been doing it so that's taking up a lot of his time he's adding in extra readings for that and he's doing more seminary classes this year so i'm not enrolled as a student to be clear that sounds like i am i'm not but there are a number of high quality seminary level courses that are online through like RTS and um, other seminaries. And so I'm actually going through them several this year uh, as part of my Bible reading plan. Yeah. And then he has other seminary classes he wants to take mm -hmm. just in general. So more of his learning time, more of his, you know, consuming time in that way is going towards that. So why don't you share what your little pitiful baby reading challenge. I'm just kidding. Um, what's your reading challenge going to be for this year? So <clears throat> my reading challenge 
at least in theory, I have it set right now as 52 books as opposed to 104. So I'm just scaling it down by one book a week to one book per week. One book per week. Um, and for that very reason, I didn't want, oftentimes I use my reading goal to motivate me to read more. And I never feel like a slave to that. I mean, there's been many years we don't actually hit mm -hmm. our reading challenge. I just use it as kind of like a motivator to be like, yeah. oh, do you really want to be on Instagram right now? Or like, put your stupid phone down, you mm -hmm. idiot, and pick up your book. You'll actually enjoy it way more. Uh -huh. um, and uh, so that's what I use it for. And so I was afraid, and actually it did happen last year because I actually had the aspiration to go through a few courses last year, all year long, always intended to, but I just never actually like, I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll start it next week. Like it's, it doesn't it's just become too much. like a priority. Yes. And so I thought if I intentionally scale my reading challenge down a little bit, maybe I would actually have more motivation to take some of the courses and stuff I wanted to do, as well as I actually built a, 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 a goal around them as well. So now I, I, instead of doing 104 books per year, I wanted to do, um, I want to do 52 books and a seminary course per month. Yeah. So I kind of, I, I know that's not the same thing as reading. It's not a book, but like, it's kind of a parallel goal. Mm -hmm. Well, and often what'll happen is when we sit down at night, Jason will have his headphones in and he's watching the class on his phone and I'm sitting there reading my nonfiction. So it really is. It's the, the reason it's you're down, you're whatever downgrading your reading challenge well, it's is taking because, reading time. Yeah. It's taking, it's taking that time. Cause mm -hmm. we don't, there's not any extra time to yeah. find that you're going to go through this. You can't yeah. take work, your work day or anything mm -hmm. to do that. So it's taking up that time. So we'll see. I, I keep joking that he's going to up it back to one Oh four. Um, but that's great. Like if he ends up reading more, that's great. But I think it's smart to not have it be as high because yeah. You I'll wanna... probably wait a few months and see how it ends up going. Mm -hmm. I mean, so far it's been a week and I've only read one book, which is That's on true. track. Although I, like you said, I'm in the middle of like nine others. So like, yeah, we'll see. I will start finishing some more like dominoes. Yeah. Back to back. Well, we'll see. We'll give you a reading challenge update in a couple of months. So mine, see, mine's not actually changing that much. It feels like it. Mine is staying the same. So mine's going to be 104, which I had toyed with. What did we do to figure out? I don't remember what the number is. Like a middle, like. Yeah, like reading one and a half per week. Yeah, one and a half books per week. I had kind of talked about, think it, thought about maybe making that my goal. We'll kind of see again, maybe a few months in. <laughs> maybe I'll adjust it. What do we say? Like 78? Yeah, some, somewhere around that. So I am leaving my goal at 104. But this year, I am starting out with a book list. So what I generally do is I'll often have like a little stack of books on my nightstand that's like five or six different books. Um, and those are the, kind of the next ones I want to read through. And once I get through those, I'll kind of pick my next one. But this year, I literally have a list of probably like 45 books mm -hmm. that I am going to be reading like first and like reading all the way through. Um, and I have how many is on that list? Like, is that like 25 books? I don't even Something know. Something like that. I've got quite a bit, a huge two stacks right there of books. Those are my first ones. And I have actual lists that I'm going to just be working Actually, off I of. I just counted them. I think it's exactly 25. Ooh, I'm good at estimating. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got 25 books that are going to be my first ones. I have read two from that stack. Actually, one of them was not from that stack. So I've read one from that stack and I've started on the second one. And the reason that I'm doing it differently this year is I have a really big book project that I'm working on. Um, I have a concept in mind for a really what I think is going to be an awesome book, but it's it's big like this is a big this is a big project. And so what I decided is like I have this great idea, but I have a whole lot of research that I need to do. Um, there's a lot of historical research I want to do. There's so much stuff that I want. Um, it's going to be nonfiction and. I just started doing research and was like, hey, I need to read that book and I need to read that book. And so for Christmas, between Christmas and my birthday, I requested all like these are the first books from my list, which is great because a lot of these are old books. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them, I like I got a $50 gift card to Amazon for my birthday and I, I ordered at least 10 books wow. with that because a, a, a couple of those, like I got Edith Schaefer's book, What is a Family? It was $1.99 or no, it was a dollar and then $3.99 shipping. So I got it for $4. So that's why I was able to get so many because yeah, a awesome. lot of them are older ones, which was really exciting because, you know, when you go buy a new book and it's 20 bucks, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, this is expensive. And I don't have to own all of them. We don't own all of the books that we read. But for this particular project, I want to be able to highlight. I want to be able to write in it. I want to be able to reference it later, take notes. So I am kind of working on my library for this project. So that is what's going to look different. And I'm going slower through these books to really like I'm highlighting and I'm taking notes. And then there's even times where I'm stopping and I'm getting on the computer and typing things out as like I start to have ideas or interact. So I also don't want to have that pressure of like, I just need to finish this book. Um, and so that's why I kind of toyed with 
three books or, or not three books. Why do I keep thinking three? One, <laughs> I'm not upping it. <laughs> One and a half books because then I, I have a little bit of a slower pace. But at the same time, I'm really, really excited for this project. Like I'm gung ho, pick up the mm-hmm. next book. So there's a chance that I'll hit <clears throat> that 104. But I may not also, which is fine. So I've got this list in hand. I've already got these books ready to go that I'm going to read. Um, Jason did actually take the time to write all of those out in a list. So he's going to put all those down below yep. for you. And also, did you write out your first books of the year? I did, yes. OK, because you've got a bit of a stack, too. Not as much as I do. And then I have a list on my computer of like 20 more books that I want to get <laughs> yeah. after I do. these. I ones. have many <laughs> others that are not in those stacks. Those are just like the newest books I've accumulated. Yeah, but do you, do you have a, like a list like I do? I don't normally have. No, a, I have like vague ideas. Like, I, have oh, I want few, that book one day. I have a few work projects that will involve reading for research oh, that's like right. you. You're right. And so that will shape like I'm, I'll be pausing the stack at some point to be OK. I need to read these four or five books mm-hmm. on this topic. Uh, and that'll happen several times this year. Yeah. So but, we haven't really we've kind of talked about this a little bit, but Jason's going to be actually working on. We don't have a name for it, but I keep calling it like our theology basics series so he's going to be writing some smaller books like more like guides on i mean they'll probably they'll be at like a full book length but not like a they won't be like giant but they'll be more i mean maybe booklet to book length yeah yeah well i guess we'll see yeah (laughs) we'll see as it develops i feel like you're gonna have more to write than you think you will but yeah maybe we'll see so we're gonna our basics we're gonna take some like different topics like baptism like head covering well you get answer you get questions about theology Mm-hmm. related topics all the time. So we thought that this would be a helpful kind of complement to like stuff you talk about that, especially the topics that you get requested a lot, we actually would have a resource to point to. Well, so like for baptism, there's a lot of different, um, what do you call it? There's a lot of different not theories, beliefs, B- views, beliefs, yeah. views, views on baptism. My brain is not working today. If you can tell, I have no words, <laughs> no words. I'm going to get off of this and be absolutely done for the rest of my day. You're not going to say another word. I'm not going to talk to anybody else. <laughs> no, I'm just going to turn my brain off and like go cook dinner. It's going to be glorious. And I'm going to listen to an audiobook, and you get to do the rest of all of the work. Um, what was I saying? Okay, so there's different views of baptism. So that what Jason's going to do is not just be like, this is my view of baptism. Here's the reason. He wants to lay out all the different views, the pros and cons, because a lot of times what happens is like, I want to study the different views of baptism, but you are listening to a sermon that mm-hmm. is so one-sided that you're only getting that side. And it just can be really hard to wade through and be like, well, what does the other side actually think? Yeah. What what do they think? And so Jason's going to, you know, as much as you I'm can. I'm going to do my best to um, explain and show like the, you know, the, the-, the theological and exegetical um, argumentation for both or all sides um, as unbiasedly as possible. Yeah. So like and I think there's really a need for this because so like when we started studying baptism for four ish years ago, four years ago, yeah. we, you know, we kind of came in from very traditional Baptist backgrounds and we didn't even know the other argument. We didn't know in the different views within that. And so it's really hard to find a source when you're like, okay, I, I want to study baptism. I want to know why I believe what I believe, or I'm curious in the other side. It's really hard to find a resource then that's going to be like, these are the different sides. These are what they argue for. These are the, you know, the weaknesses and the pros. And so that's what he's going to be working on for a few different subjects, which is going to be really exciting. I think this is going to be, it's going to be kind of the resources we wish we had you know, diving into Mm -hmm. a lot of these theological topics. So that will drive a lot of your reading this year, too. We both have a lot of like project based reading that we're going to be doing. Exactly. So that's going to end up directing my reading time much more than the reading challenge itself. So, I mean, if I get through 50 books this year because I'm so deep in research and doing that, then that's what I get through, you know, which is fine, too. And when it comes to the (laughs) fiction side of things, we'll both read a bunch of fiction, but I don't usually plan that out Mm -hmm. nearly so much. I I finish a series. Generally speaking, I will stick with a series till it's done. Yeah. Um, But other than that, like know what the next series is going to be. I just whatever I'm in the mood for when I finish. another. Well, so I will say this year I'm going to make myself do it. I've been saying for two years now that I'm going to finally read Lord of the Rings. And the Wheel of Time. And I've read I've read parts of Lord of the Rings and I've read through book four. I don't know, four, four or five of Wheel of Time, which how many books are there? Fourteen. So like I barely like scratched it in. And um, I did just recently, though, start over Wheel of Time number one again because I have to go back. I'm like, I don't remember now. So um, we've been watching. There's a new Wheel of Time TV show. Mm -hmm. We watched season one because I remember book one well enough. But now season two is out and I need to 
Even we even waiting to read watch through. it until you've actually freshly read them. But I'm gonna. I I want to read that whole series this year. I want to finally do it. It is worth it. It I is. Know. I'm gonna it is an absolutely I really en- top classic for a reason. So I really enjoyed it when I was reading it. But my mistake is, see, with that series is I was listening to it as audio, and as with seven kids now in the home that are starting to become older. I don't actually have as much listening time as I did when they were all little itty bitties. And so I don't have as much listening time. And so what I found was those can be very long books and they can be slower in parts. They are slower, especially as the series progresses. Yeah. And so I found myself just not picking it up, not listening to it. And then, of course, when you're only listening to it in little chunks spread over a long time, it feels even slower and even longer. And so I finally, I think we got really busy and I just didn't start book five. And then it got so long that I didn't go back to it. And so I'm reading them this time instead of listening. And I think that's going to make a really big change. Like I think, because I really enjoyed the story. I really liked it. But it just it wasn't the right timing in the right mode at the time. So, well, I am very excited for you to finally read these know, because I've been wanting them. to talk to you about them for years. Oh, go get our Horatio Hornblower. Oh, okay. So I don't know if anybody's ever read the Horatio Hornblower series. Um, Jason said he had like vaguely heard of them, but they're classics. And we had our library. And then you want to get my book stacks, too? <laughs> or here, sure. give me those. <laughs> so our library had... Um, like their library sale, friends of the library sale or whatever. And I found the complete Hornblower series and I had to buy them. I called Jason. I sent him a photo and I was like, if you're watching on video, you can see these. Um, I was like, we I said, what do you think about these? And he was like, get them because we're both like, look how beautiful they are. So actually it was missing, I think, three books of the series. So I was able to find the same editions because they're gorgeous <laughs> uh, used online. So we have this whole series, the Hornblower saga. Um, so we are both, are we reading these this year? Yes. I, don't I think, think we're going to read them. Good. Oh, so, um, here, hand me that, hand me the, um, nope, the other one. I forget what it's called. So we just got a book in the mail today. Jason doesn't know this. The Classical Reader, a comprehensive reading guide for uh, K through 12 students. Um, this is put on by Classical Academic Press, and it's just like a really good, like, classic reading list. And I was just flipping through. We just got this in the mail today. And the Hornblower series oh, is no in way. here. So I was like, okay. This is going to be Do you remember what, what year it's on? No, I was just flipping through. It was a later one. It was probably high school, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, so that was really fun. So the Hornblower series is one we want to read. Um, so we've got some definitely, we do have some fiction series that we want to go yes. through. And these are small books. Like, I mean, yeah, they're those not. those aren't terribly long. They're like 300 pages, but they're not like. That's not long for a fiction. They're novel. not crazy. So this, welcome. Can they see this? How far down does this? Yeah, I think. I think the whole I think you can see all these. These are my new book sets. <laughs> now, I will say getting a new stack of books that you're really exciting, excited about is like one of the best yeah. motivators for well, I'm excited for at read. least half of these stacks because I plan to read about half of them. Yeah. When I was ordering these for research, I was opening them up and Jason's like, oh, I want to read that one. And I want to read that one. Like mm-hmm. he was all excited. Well, about like my stack, you have so. like every book by Wendell Berry in here. And I've always wanted no, to read it. So. I have like. One uh, percent of the books that he's well, you have several. So, but I've got a lot. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you guys. Maybe you're gonna, maybe some of you are gonna guess. I don't know. the 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 reading is so varied that I don't know if people are gonna guess the book that I'm working on. What do you think? I I don't know. I'm I kind mean, of pulling I, from a to, wide range. I know what it's about, so oh, it's hard range. for me to. Okay, so I'll just go through a few. I've got several books by Stephen Osmond. Um, this is Ancestors: The Loving Family in Old Europe. A Mighty Fortress, A New History of the German People. Um, he has one or two other books, I think, that are They're I, in the stack somewhere. Oh, are they in here somewhere? See, I can't see. No. No, I guess not. I don't know that I have any more of his. Um, this one was just kind of one that I had wanted. This is From Bread to Wine, Creation, Worship, and Christian Maturity by James B. Jordan. Um, you want to read this one, too. Yeah, well, and, actually, um, all, all three of those are on my list. And this one, it kind of relates, but not as much. I've got two very homemaking ones, home comfort um, and home management, plain and simple. These are both classics. I don't know if you consider this one a classic, but it's classic. So those are going to be used for research. And then Wendell Berry. So Wendell Berry writes a lot of essays and stuff on kind of American life. Um, So he's I've got a bunch in here. What are people for? These are all ones that I got really cheap. Um, Sex, economy, freedom and community. Um, I don't know. I've got I do have a lot of his bringing it, bringing what? Bringing it to the table on farming and food by Wendell Berry. 
People talk about Wendell Berry. I've never read anything by Wendell Berry. So we're going to see. Oh, yeah. The Art of the Commonplace. Uh, the Agrarian Essays of Wendell Berry. So I'm, I'm really hoping I like yeah. these. And here's another Osmond. Oh, here's another Osmond. When Fathers Ruled Family Life in Reformation Europe. Half of you guys listening are like, we don't I, don't, care. I don't care about any of these. And I'm like all excited. Like, I can't wait. Um, I am going to be reading a lot more um, Edith Schaefer and Francis Schaefer. I've really never read I've hardly read a, anything. I've read, I've read a ton read, of Francis Schaefer. I read Edith Schaefer's book, The Art of Homemaking, a long time ago. So right now I just started her book, um, What is a Family? I'm not overly loving it. Yeah, you were telling me that. But. Is it more stylistic or content wise? Both. Oh. No, I'm I'm not connecting with her style. It's very, very at the beginning of this book anyway. It's very flowery, and I have a hard time with overly like poetic yeah, she flowery writes very, language. In a very embellished way. Yeah, and I just can't. I don't have the patience for it. And I know so many people love that. So I feel like her thoughts are super kind of jumbled, and I'm only in chapter one. So I'm going to definitely give it time. Um, her book, Common Sense Christian Living. This one looks really good. Um, so I have a lot of Edith and Francis Schaefer that I want to read this year. Also, <clears throat> I think that's the only one in here of those. Um, these books are actually two new ones that we got that mm -hmm. look so good. Yeah. Andrew Peterson is the author of the Wing, Wing, Feather, Feather Wing Feather Saga. Um, so Adorning the Dark, Thoughts on Community, Calling, and the Mystery of Making, and go The God of the Garden, Thoughts on Creation, Culture, and the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I have known nothing about these other than we've only read his fiction, so they look but I'm pretty. Excited. Yeah, I don't know his theology. I don't. I have no idea. But man, these covers hooked me in, and <laughs> like I was like, yes. Actually, the reason I bought them is they were. It was before Christmas, and they were each like had a coupon for like four dollars off, so I got them each for like six bucks. So nice. That felt good. Um, I will build my church. Oh, this selected is such writings a good book. on church polity, baptism, and the Sabbath. This yes. is one Jason added to my stack. I read and said, that. Read this. Like two years ago, and I've been telling her to read it ever since. It's very good. This is a book I found at the library sale. Mm -hmm. I know nothing about it. Farm, a year in the life of an American farmer by Richard Rhodes. It looks so good. It mm -hmm. just looks. I don't know. That one's going to be fun. Oh, and Jason added this. Yeah, this discontinuity to continuity onto my list, uh, and then. This is the first book I read this year, Domestic Extreme, Extremist. Extremist. Ext Extremist, A Practical Guide to Winning the Culture War. I don't disagree with the premise of this book or what she says, but I really had to fight to finish this book. I'm just going to be honest. Was it another stylistic issue? No, just well, her if tone. You, if you agreed with it, then it... No, like I agreed with the premise. I agreed with the thing she was saying, but it felt like it needed to be... I don't really know who the audience is for this book because literally everything I was like, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like abortion is bad. Yeah. But like who on the other side is picking this up? And oh. she's a very, very, very sarcastic writer. So okay. she can be funny in parts, but also in the parts I'm like, okay, like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it felt like this book was very much written for like the Fox news crowd. Okay. Is what it feels like. Like, too simplistic in a way. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It was interesting. If anybody's read this, I'd like to hear your thoughts. But it was good. I mean, it. Was, I mean, I read it. Okay. We'll go through this fast. Um, I love this author as well. Alan Carlson. Um, yeah. Alan Carlson. The These American are both Way. On my list for this year. The American Way. Family and Community and the Shaping of the American Identity. I listened to this book in 2023. Mm. I loved it. I wanted to get it to write notes in to further my research. And then Third Ways. How Bulgarian Greens, Swedish Housewives, and Beer-Swilling Englishmen Created Family-Centered Economics and Why They Disappeared. These ones are going to be that directly related to my book. Well, a lot of these are. Some of them are kind of more like, like a year in life of the farmer. That's not like completely related, but I'm yeah. excited to see kind of some principles from that. So anyway, now that I just bored you guys for a thousand years, <laughs> the last two books, this is actually for my sourdough cookbook research. So this is a different project, and I am like... I'm so excited for these two books. So this one's 6,000 Years of Bread. It's Holy and Unholy History. So this is the book I'm actually starting today. And then Sourdough Culture, A History of Bread Making from Ancient to Modern Bakers. This book was written over 70 years ago, which is really, really interesting to me. And this book is written kind of as like a modern follow-up. It's not the same author, but it's kind of built. This it's is kind of a- spiritual successor, so yes, to speak. Yeah, so I don't, I can't recommend them yet, but like, this gets me excited <laughs> like, as a bread baker. This gets me really excited. Yes. So 
Anyway, I thought I would share those because some of these would definitely probably interest some of you. Um, so now we'll get my stack. I'm just kidding. Are you getting your stack? <laughs> We're going to be here for 100 years. <laughs> we'll be here years. for hours if I do that. But um, you can follow Jason on Goodreads and you can see all the books he's reading. So Jason is going to put all these. He's already gone through and he wrote them all down. Yes. He's awesome. Um, so he's going to put all of these into the show notes. So if you need to find the show notes, go to findingjoyinyourhome.com. Do you know what episode number this is? 25. Season Whoa. three, episode 25. He's awesome. Well, I, had I to, have no clue. I already had to look it up for today. So <laughs> so episode 20, season three, episode 25. I know about your podcast you, than you do. I know, you guys. I, <laughs> I do nothing around here. It's all him. So then if you look on YouTube as well in the show notes, then you'll be able to find all of those as well. You can't link very prettily in youtube so you'll have to just paste in yeah the the links for them but they'll be there so so do you want all the book links i guess this is a, a topic for off off camera but you, you want them all if you okay. don't mind it's gonna be long notes but okay if you don't mind yeah no, i, I meant for them in. specifically oh in YouTube. for youtube i mean i guess in youtube you could link i don't think there's a limit yeah do it that way or you can link and say okay. find them over here on the website uh with that said we are in the middle <sighs> We're in the middle of our a website. Of oh, yeah. <laughs> so like, of what are you, I don't know a million things. <laughs> we're in the middle of a website redo. Yes. Uh, I had a moment this week where I was like, Jason. And he was like, well, I'm like, can you come in here for a minute? And he was like, what? And I'm like, I'm in over my head. I was very distraught. Well, we're um, doing a lot of it ourselves. We so. are redoing the website and I am taking on the bulk of the designing. I have designed websites in a former life. I don't enjoy doing it. I don't particularly think I'm amazing at it. Jason, however, is like, you can totally do it. So anyway, I had a moment where I was like, I am just in over my head. And so we sat down and had a meeting, really fleshed out what we want to do. I feel way better about it mm -hmm. till I get to the next step of everything. <laughs> but we are we're in the middle of a huge website redo, which is going to make finding books book lists and, and everything like so much easier to find. Um, it's going to be really amazing. So look out for that whenever I can get my act together. Stop reading books for a few minutes to <laughs> finish that website, yep. which we're working on. So anyway, thank you guys so, so much for joining us today. Don't forget. I can't bury it. I can't unbury it now. Don't forget to check out. There we go. Our sponsor for today's episode, um, the Hellmaker's Friend Daily Planner by Sue Holy. It is amazing. You can get three dollars off with my code planner, all capitals planner. Uh, you can get three dollars off. So go check it out at Homemaker's friend.com as a reminder they are a small business just like we are and i love being able to support small businesses when you order a planner from them it means so much more to them than buying your planner off of amazon or somewhere like that so if you're looking for a good planner i highly recommend to go check out homemakersfriend.com and uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in we will see you guys back here next week for the next episode yeah.